So Anderson, would you like to introduce yourself to the people who are watching these videos? Thank you. Uh, I'm Anderson Jeremiah and I come from a small town of about a million people in South India uh, called Velour. Uh, and I've come to Scotland to, to do my uh, doctoral research, originally ordained in Church of South India and currently based in Lancaster University and I do teach uh, across uh, different disciplines uh, in theology and religious studies and, uh, and also in politics and international relations. So uh, effectively my work cuts across all these disciplines um, and I, I do reflect my own Christian faith in the intersections of these different disciplines. And Mike, what about you? Would you like to introduce yourself to those who are going to be watching our videos? Yeah, OK. So I'm Mike Higton. Um, what can I say about myself? I currently teach theology at Durham University, um, specialise in modern interpretations of, of Christian doctrine. Um, the other part of my role, uh, there's a thing called the Common Awards Partnership, where Durham University is the validating institution for a lot of the Church of England's ministerial training around the country and a lot of the ecumenical partners working with the Church of England in that and I'm part of the academic leadership from the university side on that so in normal times I travel around the country quite a bit though in recent years I've been on Zoom a lot instead of traveling around the country. Um, I came to Durham from Cambridge and before that from Exeter. I originally I uh, went to university to study maths, but got waylaid on the way to a maths degree and became a theologian more or less by accident, um, and then never looked back. What about you? Would you like to introduce yourself? Um, so I'm Sarah Brush. I teach at Ripon College Cudston, which is a place that trains Ordinands uh, to be Anglican clergy. And my focus is mostly uh, theological reflection, ministry and mission. Um, and I also look after all of the placements and their safeguarding as the safeguarding lead for our college. Um, and I came into teaching directly from my curacy, but prior to that I had been a diocesan youth officer for Worcester Diocese. Um, and before all that, uh, a youth worker, and before that, a medieval Latin historian. So it's a slightly strange journey towards teaching, but it all seems to have come together in a sort of sensible kind of jumbly way uh, to be working with Ordinands looking at history and looking at present ministry. Now we're going to watch Mike Higton's video on doctrinal theology. So as Christians live their lives, as they seek to follow Jesus, as they worship, as they uh, try to love their neighbours, as they try to be disciples of Jesus, they end up telling stories and, and making claims about God and God's ways with the world. That's, that's always been part of Christian life. And doctrinal theology is a discipline in which we look at those claims and stories and try to make sense of them. Now, at some level, that kind of theology is always going on. Um, as Christians have told these stories and made these claims, they've always elaborated on them, explored them, thought about them. That goes on in ordinary Christian conversation, it goes on in, in sermons, it goes on in songs, and it also goes on in the activity of um, people who act as sort of formal theologians who, who do this kind of work in um, a formal way, writing about it, thinking about it in a sort of professional way. So doctrinal theology is the exploration of those sorts of claims. It's, as it were, sort of sketching in the backdrop to the action of Christian life. There's a backdrop of claims about where we came from and where we're going, a backdrop of claims about um, God making the world, about God acting in the world to save us, about the difference that Jesus makes to our life, about where we're headed in the long run with all of this. Those claims form the kind of scenery that surrounds the action of Christian life. And actually it turns out that over the centuries, Christians yeah. have been unusually invested in this kind of exploration. It's not something that's universally true of all religious communities, but Christians have been unusually invested in the process of, of telling a story about um, God and God's ways with the world as a, as a core part of their religious life together. 
telling it in their worship, telling it in, in the life of their churches, and telling it in their, in their mission, passing on the good news of, of Jesus. So telling a story about God and God's ways with the world. It's there in, in scripture, um, in, in multiple different tellings of the, the story of God's mighty acts and God's ways with the world in Jesus. It's there in the Christian tradition, an ongoing process of exploring and elaborating upon this story about God and God's ways with the world. It's a story first and foremost in Christian history about Jesus, about what was happening with Jesus and Jesus' disciples, what was happening with um, Jesus' life and ministry, Jesus' death and resurrection. But it's also a story about what God was up to in those acts and how that relates to the rest of God's history with God's people, with the people of Israel and with the church, and all the way back to what God was up to in creation and what God has as a future for the world um, in the last times. They've told an expansive story in all sorts of different tellings, all sorts of different ways to provide this expansive backdrop to the lives that they live out with each other in the world. Now, as doctrinal theologians explore that story and try to make sense of it and try to dig into the ideas that turn out to be uh, crucial to it, there are two besetting temptations. One is that it turns out to be quite easy to forget that it is a backdrop to Christian action and to get so invested in exploring the interconnections of this big cosmic story from creation to eschaton that the connection of that storytelling to the lives of ordinary Christians gets lost. And the other besetting temptation is that uh, as theologians explore all of this, they sometimes lose sight of the way in which that story is always being told by particular people in particular contexts. When you're dealing with this vast canvas and sort of giving an overview of God's ways with the world, it's easy to lose sight of the, way, the fact that that overview is always being expressed by someone located at a particular place in the world who only has a sort of a partial view of that whole story, who sees it from a particular angle. And there can also be another tendency in doctrinal theology uh, which can make it go very wrong. And that can be the tendency for doctrinal theologians who explore these claims and, and investigate them to end up thinking that they know God better than those who don't do that work so explicitly. So let me give you an example. Um, I sometimes preach in our local church and a while ago I preached on Trinity Sunday and I gave a sermon on the doctrine of the Trinity. And as an academic theologian I know that the history and the technicalities of that doctrine probably better than most of the other people in that congregation. And I was able to draw on that. As I, as I gave my sermon. And I could fall into the temptation of thinking, because I know that stuff, because I know the history of the doctrine of the Trinity, because I know the technical terminology, I know how to explain it, I can give lectures to undergraduates about it, because of all that, I might be tempted to think, I know the triune God, the God who's Father, Son and Holy Spirit, better than the people in the pews in front of me who don't know those things. And that would be a disastrous thing to think. Knowledge of God doesn't consist in knowledge of doctrinal theology in that sort of abstract and technical way. Um, knowledge of God consists in, in love, in knowledge of God's love for you and in knowing how to love God and to love one's neighbours. So I don't want to say that as a doctrinal theologian in that, that context, I know God better than the people around me, but I think I do know something. As a doctrinal theologian, I think I know something about how the claims that emerge in and help power Christian life as we seek to follow Jesus together, how those claims go together about some of their implications, about some of the controversies that surround them, about some of the limits that you rub up against as you try to live with those claims. Doctrinal theology is knowledge about those things. It's a form of service to the life of the church, only one kind of, of service, um, and not, it's not central to the life of the church, but I do think it's one important service to the life of the church to explore these claims, these forms of storytelling that do come up in our lives together, in our work together. And as I say, see how they hang together and see some of the questions that arise around them. 
And that's all that doctrinal theology is, but I do think it's worth pursuing. So, Mike, uh, we watched your video on a modern interpretation or understanding of uh, Christian doctrine. Would you enlighten us with a little bit more of what it means? Um, well, I, mean, I tried to give an overview in the, the video. Um, I think 